Okay, dear students, let us see how to do this question now. A ball is thrown upwards at time t is equal to 0. The graph shows the variation with time of the height of the ball. The ball returns to the initial height at time t is equal to capital T, that is at this point. What is the height h at a time t? Okay, so the graph that is shown here, it looks like a projectile motion. But this is not a projectile motion, like this is, even that is called a projectile, but it's not oblique projectile. This kind of a projectile is given a special name, oblique projectile. But this is not what we are actually talking about here, okay. You can see that on the x-axis it is time. So this graph is just an explanation of the real motion. So what is the real trajectory? The real trajectory is that this body is thrown up and it, it reaches a certain uh, height here and it moves like this and then it moves back and it comes back. But we are now concerned only with this height. Let us say this. Okay, so I'm not going to name these points like A, B and this point I have named C and when it comes back I have named it D. So what is given in the question is that the total time taken is capital T for this complete journey that is A to D. Okay, so now you want to find the expression for H in the terms of T. So my dear students, I can suggest two different methods here. One is easy, another is quite difficult. So I am first of all going to give you the easy method. You see, there are two different boundary conditions that we can use that is at T is equal to zero. That is at this point. The body is at the ground so i can say that h is equal to zero and if i say that t is equal to capital t at that time also i can say that h is equal to uh, zero because it has reached the same point back again so these boundary conditions should be satisfied by the correct option let us see now let us go for a option first of all so t square so it is like this is equal to h now so if i substitute t is equal to zero h should be equal to zero so is it coming like that t is equal to zero yes h is equal to zero so this condition is fulfilled but what about this one if this t is capital t the h is not coming out to be equal to zero so a is wrong now if i talk about like b option uh, let us substitute this value like t is equal to zero there is no variable here there is no t so this is definitely a wrong uh, wrong uh, option because this is a constant value now what about this c1 let us substitute t is equal to zero so if this t is substituted as zero this t multiplies here again you are getting the same constant value so even c is wrong so it means that the d option is absolutely correct there is no doubt about it but we can even try so let us say like there are two t's now in this t and this t so the option is half into this into small t this this is the D option. So let us try. Let us substitute t is equal to 0. So because of this, t is equal to 0, you are getting h is equal to 0. First condition is fulfilled. And what about the second one? This t is now substituted as capital T. So t minus t is again coming out to be equal to 0. So yes, absolutely correct. We are sure about this thing that the answer is D. But my dear students, this is known as exclusionary principles that is used in uh, multiple choice questions. But this is not the right explanation of this this is not the right solution for this um, question and i would be doing it now so up to this there should be no doubt that the answer for us is d okay so i would be now doing the other method okay so in this method now what are we going to do we find this height first of all like the total height this is the capital h okay and it has fallen by some distance let us call it x and this distance will be h so h is taken as capital h minus x so now we are now going to find capital h in the terms of capital t and then we are going to find x in the terms of capital t and then we will subtract these two to get the answer okay so i am going to write all the formulas for the uh, for this thing now so capital h in this case is taken as u square by 2g and time of the flight is 2u 
moved by G because this is not an oblique projectile motion, it is only a motion in 1D. So that is why I am not using sin theta and cos theta here, okay? 2U by G. And now let me substitute this thing now. Uh, from here I can say that U by G is equal to T by 2. And uh, so this thing I multiply G above. So U square by G square. So U square by G square can be taken as T square by 4. I would be now substituting here this case. So G by 2 I have taken common. This G and this 2. And this is substituted as T square by 4. So I get a very simple equation that is this. So this is my capital H. But now I want to find this X. Okay, so X I can say that it is falling from this point and it has taken a time which is like uh, T is the total time from 0 to this and up to this T by 2 has been exhausted. So the time only for this much of the journey is T minus T by 2. And for that sake, if we are going to apply the formula from this and we want to find the X. So again, S is equal to UT plus half GT square for downward motion. U is taken as 0 because it is now going to stop at this point and it will start falling again under the influence of gravity only. So X is equal to half G into T square. And what is the time? The time is T minus capital T by 2 whole square. So this is now X. So this was 1 and this is X. Now we need to subtract these two. Okay. And for that I need space. Okay. So I'm going to rub a couple of things now. Okay, and uh, gt squared by 8. So now our answer is gt squared by 8 minus this, which is g by 2 into t minus capital T by 2 whole square. Now we just need to solve this equation. t squared by 4. And this will be g by 2 is taken common. 2 into t into capital T by 2. So this 2 and 2 gets cancelled out. g by 2 t squared by 4. This and this gets cancelled out. I think we have got the answer. Uh, this is T into capital T minus T square. From there, I am going to take small t common. It will be capital T minus small t. And yes, this is exactly same as that of our D option. So my dear students, it is this method in which uh, this question will be solved. Now, we all know that this is quite long and you can see I have taken like five minutes for this. So... It will be very difficult for you to solve this question in this method in the examination hall. So you can use the previous method that is exclusionary principle for this question specifically. And my experience is that that method, exclusionary principle, uh, can be extensively used in your question papers. The questions are set in that way. So that's not a bad idea. So all the best.